There are several lists in the firearms industry, but one of the most popular is X number of best guns. But what about the worst guns though? What are the ones to stay away from? The ones we don't discuss. Here are 6 of the worst guns ever made. Keep watching to find out why these handguns are rated the worst. Taurus Judge The Taurus Judge is a .45 Colt revolver and a .410 gauge shotgun that is terrible at both of those things. We have to accept that it would function if used for self-defense at a standard self-defense range. If filled with a birdshot, it also works well as a snake gun. However, it's a fix for a non-existent issue. Being a .45 Colt revolver, it is horrible. The barrel twist is incorrect and the grips are too small. With 410 loads, it is obviously ballistically challenged. They have so much cylinder gap to go around with a judge's 3-inch rifle barrel. .45 Colt that pinpoint accuracy is best described as difficult with it. The trigger also blows strongly. Even the single-action trigger has a clunky, weighty feel about it. The rubber ribbed grip has the impression of being J-frame sized instead of a .410 pistol, a .38 special. The judge is so unsightly compared to other .45 Colt revolvers like the Model 25 and the Colt SAA and clones that you have to cover your head with a brown paper bag in case the one the judge is in breaks. The trigger is likewise far from ideal. The judge isn't as excellent at being a .410 gauge shotgun as actual .410 gauge shotguns, nor is it as good as being a .45 caliber revolver as other .45 caliber revolvers. Shotguns with .410 gauge. Derringer Modern pistols can't match the coolness of derringers in that regard. Derringers are neither a pistol nor a revolver. Derringers are a unique type of handgun. These compact, double-barreled pistols can accommodate cartridges, ranging from 22 LR to 45 Colt. Some Derringers, such as the Bond Arms Derringers, are expertly made weapons. They rank among the worst weapons for concealed carry, nevertheless you receive two rounds, a trigger that only works in one action, extremely short barrels and tiny grips. These three characteristics work together to produce a lot of recoil, a delayed follow-up shot, and a lengthy reload time. Additionally, a lot of centerfire derringers aren't all that much smaller than a weapon like the six-shot Ruger LCP. Derringers, a design invention from the 1840s, are extremely ineffective. Even while contemporary derringers can be nicely constructed, they are poor choices for self-defense. The shooter will feel every foot-pound of recoil and they might be difficult to target and hold onto. Additionally, even with two rounds, the majority of firearms demand that you manually cock the hammer before shooting. That significantly slows down both your opening shot and subsequent shots. They are the worst firearms for self-defense. Not the worst self-defense weapons. Being a 410 revolver is difficult, but I believe Derringers have it far harder. Derringers may look cool, but they're not a good option for concealed carry. Nambu There have been a lot of poorly made guns, but not as badly created as the Nambu Type 94 which was made between 1935 and 1945. Despite being a fairly bad handgun, the Imperial Japanese Army utilized it frequently throughout the Second World War. Yet why? What specifically makes the Nambu Type 94 one of the deadliest pistols in global history? The semi-automatic Nambu Type 94 pistol was created by Kajir Nambu, a retired army veteran, and his collaborators. Only two of these three requirements were ever accomplished. It was intended to be compact, light, and extremely effective. Even though it was modest, it was completely ineffective. In actuality, it posed a serious risk to its consumers. First of all, its small stature had a few unfavorable consequences. It featured the tiny grip that fit the Japanese warrior's little hands admirably. However, this design still has problems. There were numerous small and fragile interior parts. Disassembly was required in order to clean. In reality, reassembling the weapon was a very difficult task in and of itself, especially in the field. The issue of inadvertent firing is another issue. The Nambu Type 94 was uninvitedly firing if it wasn't jamming, spitting out its magazine, or destroying itself during disassembly. The sear bar, which was mounted outside of the handgun, was the issue. If the pistol was dropped or handled carelessly, it could be quickly pressed. In fact, there are numerous accounts of the rifle going off when soldiers purposefully squeezed the sear bar while acting like they were giving up. Although the Nambu Type 94 had a truly bad design, a lot of its problems also resulted from subpar production. For instance, early sights were of poor quality, and as the battle went on, the quality deteriorated further. The most recent batch of Type 94 handguns has a variety of parts along with even lower quality and sights. 
Bursa Thunder. The most popular caliber for the single stack all metal Bursa Thunder DASA handgun is 380 ACP. Without counting some distributor exclusive varieties, the Thunder is produced in Argentina and imported by Eagle Imports in more than a dozen different configurations. In a gun store, the Bursa Thunder is precisely the kind of handgun that grabs everyone's attention. Unfortunately, the Thunder doesn't quite live up to expectations in practice. The Bursa Thunder comes in a variety of configurations with several caliber choices. The Bursa Thunder had a mixed record when it came to dependability. The last round of the magazine was the exception to the gun's generally good operation. The feed lips would keep the last round's rim in place and the round would be vertically inserted into the action following it. Although relatively simple to fix, this error was undoubtedly not ideal. Sights and dovetails are present on the majority of Bursa Thunder models. With the CC, Bursa made a different decision. The slide has sights machined into it in, instead of dovetails. Given their small size, calling them sights could be a bit kind. Beyond roughly 7 years, they don't provide much precision and are quite challenging to align quickly, which is unfortunate. Magnum Desert Eagle Aside from gun collectors and hunters looking for a show-stopping sidearm, the Desert Eagle has never been formally adopted by any significant military or police organization. A potent new pistol swiftly became a gun celebrity in the middle of the 1980s. Innovatively, the Desert Eagle transferred powerful revolver bullets to the semi-automatic handgun platform. Although pricey and not widely used by military services, the Desert Eagle earned a cult following because of its appearance in numerous action movies. It's large and hefty, and it fires large bullets of caliber 50 AE. Why when you can get one in dot .44 Magnum and even dot .357 Magnum? Is it not a wonderful gun to carry? The first reason is that it is large. If you want to conceal it, you must use a backpack. Aside from its size, caliber 50 AE may not always provide the necessary power to stop an attacker. The Desert Eagle is a well-known firearm with little actual use. Despite this, the Desert Eagle is incredibly well-liked, and the idea of a large handgun has come to be associated with the Desert Eagle's large frame. Are you a good shooter? Then you should absolutely become a channel subscriber. We post gun-filled videos like this one in which we discuss the top pocket pistols available now. And yeah, we compiled a list of awesome guns that could save your life one day. So go and check it out.